Sarah sent this all the way from London, England, and it's the biggest project we've done on the channel so far. Every project you do has its own set of challenges, and uh, this one's certainly no exception. A piece this size, I would be inclined to want to put a brush on rubber mold and then do it as a rotational casting, but it's not a uh, very good shape for rotational casting. It's got too many thin linear elements, too many different directions. It's a very difficult shape to get a good clean hollow casting with even walls. Uh, it just is not a good candidate for it. Besides which, Sarah has a whole nother requirement. She wants to pressure cast this in resin and she has a pressure pot. Uh, I've drawn the, the diameter of her pressure pot here on the table and I built a mock-up of the pot. You can kind of see the problem. Uh, this piece barely fits in the pressure pot. Uh, and not only does it barely fit in the pressure pot, it doesn't leave a lot of room for the mold. By the time we build up a mold around this piece, uh, it's going to be an extremely tight fit. And there just isn't a lot of room. <sighs> So usually on a, the bigger the piece, the, the wider you want your flashing or your parting line to be because you just need that interlocking. You don't want little tiny parting lines running around a piece this size. Also, when you pour in resin something this big, keep in mind, when she pours it, it's gonna be hanging in space like this. And so that's how it's gonna sit down inside her pressure pot. So this whole thing has to fit in the pressure pot. You can see how close it is. It's barely wider than my fingers on the bottom. That's not very much flat. That's not very much rubber to support that amount of weight of resin. It's a real problem and it's a real challenge. So this could possibly be the biggest mold making challenge we've faced on this channel. We'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> if we blow it, we'll blow a couple hundred bucks easy worth of materials, if not more. But if I do everything right, we should come up with a mold that will deliver perfect copies. Because we're going to pour this piece like this upside down, that means I'm going to be pouring through the feet. I like to have extra on the bottoms because when you pour the resin, it's going to shrink and it's going to cup. So I want an, an eighth of an inch of extra material on each one of these bottoms in the mold. So I have that extra eighth of an inch to sand this thing flush later. To that end, I found this absolutely perfect piece of scrap masonite. And it's just a simple enough matter with a sharp pencil tracing around. Let's get these things traced out. Let's go over and get them cut out on the jigsaw. The feet are all nicely shaped up <coughs> and ready to apply. I'm going to stick them on there like that. To do that, break out the trusty wax, the old sticky wax. That's going to be literally more than enough. Get nice and dissolved on there. Trick is to heat the surface of the wood. That way the wax works in. All right, let's see how that goes. I get it positioned on there, nice and even, all the way around. Get it on there, press it on, just like that. Just making sure I get it on there good. Okay, here we go, let's do the other one. That should be more than enough, more than enough. Get the wood hot. And that should be ready to go. Let's get that thing in place. This one's little, so it's easy. Now, once those are on there, and we're gonna just stand him up. We'll let the weight of him sit it down like that. All right, that is just exactly what I wanted to have happen. I cut out this circle of wood, and I waxed it really well, and it represents the diameter of Sarah's tank. 
So now this frame again is how big our tank is going to be. And so the key now is going to be to position this figure in such a way that he's not too close on any edge. The mold doesn't have to fill this entire thing. In fact, the mold wants to be as small as it's going to be, but it can't be bigger than what fits inside of this parameter. I think that's about the best we're going to do. We'll just call it like that and then we'll get and we'll mark it out and we'll get him attached to this base. Now that I know how I'm going to divide the mold, I've got all the parting lines laid out. It's time to build up the rubber body of the mold, the actual rubber mold itself. And in order to do that, we're going to need a container. But the container is not going to be a box and it's not going to be a cylinder. It's not going to be the kind of mold that we would make for a small object because that would use way too much rubber and it would be very hard to cut, very hard to handle, etc., etc., all these bad things. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to build up the rubber mold out of clay. So I'm going to cover the figure from top to bottom, from head to foot, in a sculpture of clay, and that clay is going to represent the rubber mold. But I do not want to get oil clay all over the body, all over the surface of this figure, mostly because I don't want to clean it, and I don't want to risk damaging it. So the first step, then, is to wrap the whole thing in cling wrap and blue painter's tape. And uh, then after we get him all well and truly condomed up, uh, we'll go ahead and apply the clay. Okay, I got the figure all wrapped in plastic. The blue tape doesn't stick very well to the plastic, but it doesn't have to because everything's just going to be held together by the clay. So what I have done is I've rigged up a slab rolling system for my clay. And I put, this, I put the clay out in the good desert sunshine so it's hot, so it's easy to mash. And basically all you do is we want to we want to make slabs of clay as quickly and as effectively as we can. So I just put the clay in like this. This process will eat up a tremendous amount of clay, but it's all going to be reusable. So that's good. So to get the clay to a uniform thickness, you just slab it out. Just roll it on out. And that's all you need to do. So let me roll out this first slab of clay and then I'll come back to you and we'll start putting clay on the model. Okay, I've got the first slab rolled out. I'll just hopefully just lift it out. Now the reason to, for slabbing this stuff between these two pieces of wood is I want to make sure that I have a minimum thickness of a half an inch all over the model. And this way I guarantee that I'm going to achieve that result. So now we can just go ahead, I'm going to just cut a chunk. It's going to just be a cut and fit job. Build the slabs around the model. Now I've got a guarantee that even in the thinnest spots, I'm a half an inch thick. And uh, you need that. In a mold this size, you need an absolute minimum meat uh, to be sure that you don't have a flimsy or, or a delicate mold in certain spots. Okay, let's continue working. Got lots of clay rolled out. I just fit in pieces of clay wherever they fit. I want to make sure I maintain this minimum thickness coverage. That's what the whole point is. The great thing about clay, of course, is that it is malleable in all directions, so it forms itself all the way around, not just in one dimension or the other. It'll, it, it's completely formable, completely malleable. And that means that uh, it's going to stick all the way around. See how that is? Perfect. So you can also see how much clay I'm going to have to slab out. The last thing you want in a mold this size is a floppy, flimsy mold. It's got to be rigid enough to maintain its shape inside of the mother. It's got to help the mother to keep its shape. Otherwise, you can really, really have troubles in your, in your existence. So that's the process. Just keep cutting slabs and putting them on. It's pretty much all there is to this business. Got the blanket fully applied and it's a half an inch thick all the way around. And I've begun to build up the bead, which is where the parting line, the main parting line of the two halves of the shell are gonna to meet together right along that bead. 
You might be asking yourself, what is the deal with these pipes? One of my big concerns is that there are these holes like that in the model. And one of the areas I'm really worried about is these parting lines inside these holes all around, just getting the mold to close up properly. So the reason that I'm casting holes into the rubber and into the mother shell is I want to be able to run rubber bands through and around coming out of this. And that will pull these parting lines that are here in the middle. That's going to pull up here. I think that down below, we aren't going to have the issue. I think that we're going to have enough push uh, in the middle. And we'll see how I have to do to build it out. But I think we'll have enough push to hold the mold closed down here and this side. But I'm really concerned about those holes and about getting those areas to pull together tightly when I close the mold. Okay, we got the clay work going pretty good on the front side anyway. And it's not all that smooth. It's a little lumpy bumpy, but it's going to stay that way because I don't need to take the time or expend the energy to make it marble smooth or glass smooth. It's not necessary. Uh, what is more important is that there are no deep undercuts anywhere that will lock the shell uh, to this rubber blanket. Okay, it's time to build up the mother shell and we're going to do it out of fiberglass. And this is a gel coat that I'm putting on and it's an epoxy resin. Uh, interesting thing about this particular resin is the mix ratio. 100 parts resin to 16.5 parts hardener. And when I hear a mix ratio like that, I figure the manufacturer is serious about wanting me to get the mix ratio exactly right. After the gel coat cures, I lay down a coat of laminating resin, which is clear and you can't see it, but it's on there. And then it's just a matter of building up layer after layer of patches of fiberglass cloth. Uh, this, it's a lot easier to work with patches of cloth than it is to work with big sheets of cloth because I don't have vacuum bag or any other technology to get that stuff to conform. I also uh, built up the shell using epoxy clay and that works really well to fill in and fill it areas and also just build up edges like I'm doing here. So it's all epoxy, different kinds, and it all works together. The flange that runs around the perimeter of the case is a temporary structure. It's not going to be there uh, throughout the life of the mold. It's just there strictly to be used to hold the mold halves together while we pour the rubber. And after that, it'll be removed. I haven't done the flange on the back side, and we'll work on that now. And to that end, what we're going to do is I'm going to wax this piece of paper because I'm going to need some kind of a separator between the two halves of the molds. My biggest worry at this stage is getting this mold case to come apart. Uh, it's gonna, <laughs> I know already, it's gonna be kind of a bear to come apart and uh, we'll have to really work it. What we need is to make a separator between the front half of the mold case and the back half. And uh, I'm just gonna make it out of a piece of paper that's well waxed and well soaked with my old standard favorite thing in the world, beeswax. Should be soaking all the way through. Let's check it. Yes, it is. We've got some nice, made some nice wax paper. A little more, won't hurt. I want this paper to be liberally coated with wax. Okay. Nice. Now, let's make sure that it doesn't stick to the paper below it. Make sure that it's floating. Yeah, see, it might stick. Look at that. Soaked it through pretty well. I cut the wax paper into strips and I started to tack it on to the edge. And all we're doing here is we're just making the dividing line between the two molds. And I know that by having this wax paper in between the two, I'm going to have no difficulty whatsoever popping the halves, halves of the molds apart. I also put a, liberally put a coat of wax all along this flange. But how am I going to get wax paper to stick to wax? I've tried heating them and sticking them doesn't work. Fortunately, sticky wax. Da -da 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 Sticky wax to the rescue, as always. So let's put some sticky wax on there. Let's just wax it on up. Cut it into short pieces. Get the sticky wax nice and hot. And stick it on there. Okay, good enough. Okay, next piece, same drill. 
sticky wax it up. You really only need to tack it every little way, every little bit. Slam that sticky wax home. So yeah, it's working like a champ. This is all just temporary. All this stuff is gonna come out. I love how sticky wax is one of the few things that I know of that sticks to beeswax. There aren't that many things I can say that about. Okay, you all see what I'm doing. I'm just going around, making a barrier. All right, I'm gonna keep going all the way around, finish all this up, and then we can finish the fiberglassing on this half, and this thing is gonna get done. Mixed up some gel coat, and we'll get going here on the back side of this flange, on this flap that I just built out of wax paper. Okay, so we put on this nice gel coat, and we're gonna build up this flange with four or five at least layers of fiberglass to make a nice strong flange, and this is the thing that's gonna hold the whole thing together while we pour the rubber. I ran a bead of uh, epoxy sculpt all the way around to kind of fill it, the joint down in there, and that'll make the fiberglass lay in there better and also make it a lot stronger. This is the epoxy laminating resin that we've been using all along, and now we'll just slap on five coats of fiberglass. Let's lay it up. Quick, quick, quick. No time like the present. We want to build a nice strong flange. Mostly because when I take this mold apart, now the flange is going to come under a lot of pressure to help pry the mold open. Fiberglass shell work is all done, and we have one step left to go, and then we're going to take the whole thing apart. But when, once we take this shell apart, we're going to have to be able to put it together accurately and perfectly, not only to each other, to the two halves of the mold, but also in registration with the figurine, with the sculpture inside. So to make that happen, I got a bunch of screws and bolts, as you can see, and um, we're going to drill a bunch of holes. Let's see how this goes. I want to make sure I hit them right. So the first one I'm going to put right in here. Okay, just like that. Let's test it out. Now these screws are way too long. Oh yeah, they're gonna fit just right. But they're what I've got, and they will do the job. That's all I need. Don't need a million of them, I just need the right number. That's about right, right about there. All right, those bolts are gonna hold the two halves together. We have arrived at the part of this project that I've been most worried about. Has me the most concerned, most scared, and that is taking the shell apart. Now the question is, is it gonna fight me? Is it gonna battle every step of the way? Or is it going to come apart relatively easily? I don't know. Usually it's a lot of work to get a mold this size apart. And we shall see. And the thing that scares me the most of all are these tubes, because I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get these tubes out without a fight. They're well waxed, but they're also well jammed in there. So let's find out, shall we? Let's just see if I can tap them out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're going to want to go. Now the question is, is that enough for me to turn? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> sometimes I gotta admit, I gotta, I just gotta say it, sometimes I astound myself. That was magnificent. That came out exactly as it was planned to come out. Ooh, am I glad that came out easy. I'm gonna save these because we're gonna reuse those as you will see. Okay, don't get to bragging yet, Bob. You only did one. You only did the one. Let's just see if I can tap it out. Yep, sure can. Grab it and pull it. Oh, look at that, it came right out. Not too bad. Okay, we got the two long ones out. Those are the ones that worried me the most. Now watch, there'll be the little shorty that'll mess me up. <laughs> Here we go, come on, come on, baby. Come on, three for three, three for three. Yep, it's going. 
Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come to daddy. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Are you seeing this thing come out? Look at that. Oh. Beautiful. Woo! Okay. Step one. Big success. I'm thrilled with that. I really am. I cannot tell you how pleased I am with how those came out. Holy moly. And boy, are those things going to help because we are going to route rubber bands through those holes. You'll see. Those, th these host holes are going to be crucial to holding the mold together in critical areas when we go to pour the resin. Well, those tubes came out okay. And now comes the fun part. We're going to see if we can pop these two cases apart. And won't that be entertaining? This is always the hardest part with big molds. This is the part that I am least fond of. Watching me do all this stuff. Maybe now you begin to appreciate my lack of enthusiasm for two-piece clay-up molds. I hate them. And this is why they're a tremendous amount of work compared to cut molds. The funny part about this is it's going to be partially a cut mold. See if I can get rid of some of this fiberglass just to get it out of the way. Not too much. Also, it's pretty well resined up. All right, now there's no way by hand you could pry these apart. So what I have done is I have made a pile of wedges and I start with the thin ones and just see if I can start finding a place where they'll go in. I'd like to pop the backside off the front, but I'll take what I can get. And you just, it, it's really a matter of very gentle persuasion. Just take your time, take your time, and just work your way around the form. And see if you can pop it off. It's really what this is all about. This is really the time-honored way of doing this. People have been wedging molds apart. Probably since, who knows, but the first mold makers were a long time ago. And this is going to take a while. Let's go to the time lapse and we'll uh, see if we can get this thing apart. And I can tell you, it's already looking, looking like it's going to come apart. So I'm very pleased with that. So far, it's looking encouraging, which means that the beeswax, my magical, magical beeswax, is doing its thing. Yep, see, this is loose. Almost ready to come apart. Almost ready to come apart. Break out the heavy-duty artillery, get out the big giant pry bar. Yeah, it's working. It looks like it's working. All right. All right. All right, it's going. <laughs> it's going. Let's see if we can't get this thing out. It's going. It's going. Holy moly. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, baby. Come on. Clay, break free. There it goes. Whew. Let's set this over here like that. Look at that. Look at that mold. Okay. Now I would like to, if possible, preserve some of this clay, as it is about 40 pounds of clay stuck to this thing. Now, can we get? this thing off. This thing we can always just pry the clay out. But it should. It should come off. But we can always, yeah, we'll get it off of there. 
No worries. It's going to come on. Holy moly, what a mess, genius, all the clay is stuck to the mold, just as it should, and that means that nothing's stuck to the model. The model, because of this condom that I put on it, of plastic, the model should be pristine. So all I have to do now is very carefully cut this plastic off and I should have a very nice, perfectly pristine, perfectly intact, undamaged, unsullied, unsoiled model. And that was the whole point to all of this. It's all about thinking ahead. It's all about thinking about the end result and working your way backwards through the steps and then designing each step so that it impacts on the future steps in the right way and then hope and pray <laughs> that you did everything right because if you don't you're going to make a mess and you're going to blow up a lot of expensive materials which we do not want to have happen to us so we can strip this form of all this condomage. Be very careful not to damage the surface because we've done a incredible amount of work already on this project and we haven't even begun to bake the mold yet. The mold is going to be taken from this white surface, this pristine white surface. And we want to make sure that there's nothing to sully it. Nothing, no scratches, no dents, no divots. Okay, huge win. Got the mold case off. That was, that's just a huge win. Uh, it's gonna take me quite some time to clean those mold cases. I gotta try to salvage as much of the oil clay as I can, because uh, it's about 40 pounds of oil clay and I'd like to reuse it if, if it's clean enough. And then it's gonna be time to put the whole thing back together and make the rubber blanket, but we are out of time. Next week, we're going to assemble the whole thing. We're going to pour the mold. We're going to cut the mold open, put it all back together, and pour some resin, make a casting. Hope you stick around for that, and I will see you next week.